Well, folks, it was an exciting lead-up to determine the winner of the Amateur Classic in the 2017 NCHA Lucas Oil Super Stakes. There was a four-way tie for first in the final. They just had a runoff, and that ultimately saw Joel Colgrove the winner with Precious Gem marking a 220. Congratulations to you, Joel. Thank you, ma'am. How were the nerves after that? They were bad. <laughs> they were pretty revved up. <laughs> so everybody... Um, ended up with a 217 in the first uh, final. Tell us what your thoughts were and how your run went then. Well, you know, I, I had a good run, you know, and uh, but after uh, when we came out, they said, hey, don't go anywhere. It looked like uh, it's going to be a runoff. And uh, then somebody else marked another 17. It was three of us when I came out with a 17. And uh, and so uh, board told me, said, hey, don't go anywhere. You're going to mad or may have to go again. I said, oh, me. So what were your thoughts at that stage? Because four of you, another run, uh, same cows. What were you thinking? Well, Matt and, and Boyd said, hey, we're going to watch cows. We'll have you some cows. Don't worry about it. So I didn't worry about it. I just came over to the sideline and sat down and waited on them. Well, and you improved by three points. Yes, ma'am. I did a lot better. <laughs> did a what was it about your second run? Were you more relaxed? No, I, I guess I was more relaxed. You know, and I, I'd, I'd gone again. I, I had two horses in the final, and I'd gone again, and I'd hot quit on my second horse, and I kind of beat myself up over that. And so that, that kind of gets your nerve settled back down after you make a mistake like that. You just say, ah, oh, shoot, you know, and then just go on with it. So it well, worked out good. It was a bit of fun for spectators, I think, to see something a little different, a bit of a runoff. and it was fun to me. <laughs> you know it's fun to me. <laughs> so. this, is, this is not your first... Uh, title in the Will Rogers? No, ma'am. I, I I won another one back a few years ago in the, at the fraternity. Okay. So how does this one feel? How does it compare? Uh, it, it feels just as good. Now you've got um, two very well-known granddaughters who are very successful here. Um, how do you determine between you all who's going to get which horses? I get what they don't like. So they get first call. That's right. So um, they would have been very proud to watch you today. Oh, they were, they were, they seemed to be happy. Yeah, sure did. Okay, tell us about Precious Jam. Well, uh, uh, she was a horse that Madeline used to show, and uh, and Madeline didn't get along with her well, you know, or, or and uh, moved on up to another horse, and we we had her at home, and uh, uh, we had turned her out, and uh, because we weren't using her, and last year Matt came over to uh, work cattle to get ready for the fraternity. And uh, he said, hey, Joe, you got anything I can ride, you know, to help you out while I'm here? And I said, hey, you go out in the pasture and get that, uh, get old Allie. We call her Allie. And I said, ride her and, um, you know, and see what you think. Maybe we can get her sold. And uh, so he goes out there and he rides her. And he calls me up one day. I'm working down in Louisiana. And he says, uh, he says hey, uh, he says, she's pretty good mare. He says, do you care if I take her and show her a little bit? You know, and he said, I'll work on getting myself ready for the fraternity also. So I said, oh, yeah, go do whatever you want to do with her. So he goes off, and I think he wins a couple of shows with her, you know. And 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 then, you know, the fraternity comes by, and so everybody forgets about her again, and we turn her back out. And so later, uh, early in the year, in uh, 17, uh, she turned a five-year-old, and uh, and I, I was going through my phone one day, and I and I had a video of some horses from Matt there. Well, I clicked on the video, and I didn't pay any attention, you know. And I was looking, and boy, it's a nice looking run, really nice. And so I called Matt up, and I said, "Well, what they want for? How much?" He said, "Hell, that's your horse." And I said, "No." He said, "Yeah." He said, "That's Allie." I said, "Man, you better take her and go on and." Uh, and uh, see if you can't get her sold for me. So he brings her out here, and we actually get her sold, and then she fails the vet check. She has a birth defect in her front foot. Wow. And I say, hey, I tell you what to do. Just go on and get her ready for me to show here. And so he did, and it worked out good. So it's interesting, isn't it, when sometimes you find something that potentially could be wrong with a horse, you decided to take the risk because you like the horse enough yeah. anyway, and it hasn't been a problem. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie, you know, the vet said that, uh, hey, she no problem, you know, it's not bothering her any, it's good, but it's just something, you know, you can't resell her, you know, and so... You know, somebody would be taking a chance on her if they want to show horse, and but it doesn't give her any problem. We've never had any problem with it, and it worked out great. Yeah, perfect. So you're going to keep showing her? Oh, uh, I had plans to send her to the breeding farm this week, you know, and so I don't know what we'll do. We'll just have to wait and see, you know. Great chatting with you. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.